Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Unreal tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to transfer your custom hair grooms from Houdini into Unreal. If you're yet to export and start your groom from Unreal, um, a couple of quick tips. So select your head mesh here, right click on it, we're going to export it as an FBX and we want to make sure that we export it without blend shapes otherwise you'll get millions of different meshes and that's going to be very annoying. Don't change the transformations. Um, uh, we do want Y up probably for Houdini so um, if it exports and it's not the orientation then you can do that rotation. Um, either in Houdini um, or on export but um, ultimately we just want to make sure that the, it's the most comfortable orientation for sculpting in Houdini. When we export it back into Unreal we can uh, do any rotations that we need to the hair and groom etc. So once you get your head back into Houdini here um, you'll notice it comes in with eyes and um, eyelashes and there will be some teeth in there and, and a tongue and all that and we don't want that so we're going to um, drag out from that low uh, that geo node and we're just going to hit split and this node here we just want to split off the group and it will have a bunch of groups um, which you'll be able to see here in this drop down i'll just make this a bit easier to see and we want to go to the head synthesized back so if i just isolate that there you can see now that is just the head um, and that will be good to go this has got your uvs on it so after you've finished doing your hair you'll have your grooms and you'll have your hair gen like so and avoid these thin areas because they don't translate well to unreal and like i said that's because of that collision on the inside there would be fixed with a better uh, vdb so inside our hair gen um, i've got it here and i'll just disconnect this and start again so you can see how it works so uh, from the end of your node tree which would be the hair's output normally this one here you can run a uh, resample node and basically what the resample node is doing is it's going to treat all your hairs as uh, individual splines or uh, nerves curves and we want to do this because uh, in Unreal can't do the interpolation of the uh, splines it, it has to have them as uh, linear interpolation so what the resample does is it will give you smoother curves and it's more obvious i'd say on obviously curly hair like like the front part here um, than it is on maybe straight hair and you'll need to uh, have a look um, and see what's going to work best for you so if i just exported it without doing the resample this is what it would actually look like and you can see you get these hard corners there and this can be fixed uh, by going into your resample node change the treat polygon as subdivision curves and then we can also look see here at how many points there are are there enough points is going to be the question this i would say is probably too dense um, because we don't want to go too uh, too high resolution going into unreal because the performance might get bad so i'm going to increase the length there to 0.5 and that will reduce it next uh, we need to make sure we get the attribute width out so we are going to create a attribute promote and we're going to take the name width from the point class to the vertex class then we need to rename it and this is going to be called groom underscore width and finally we need to write that out and we'll just do that with a rop alembic or alembic rop rop alembic output our output is going to be as a alembic so we need to set the output path now this does essentially what the labs to unreal node does um, there is a labs hair or something like that unreal hair unreal groom export this does essentially the same thing however i've had no luck with the, the labs tool um, maybe the newer version's working but i'm just working with this if you've been having issues this will do it for you so uh, this is just slightly more manual once you've got it set it up you can package it up if you really want to so we're about ready uh, we will just render that out if we look here it's only uh, 11 megs as the as unreal loads its shaders for the millionth time so let's jump into unreal um, and have a look at those newly built shaders 
Okay, so here I am in Unreal and we just need to bring in the here groom. But before we do that, we do need to make sure that our plugin for Alembic groom is enabled. So we'll go to edit plugins and we'll type in groom. And we just want to make sure Alembic groom importer is on. Groom should be on as well. Um, and the who the here modeling tool set is irrelevant to us. So we can just drag our Alembic file into the uh, content browser now. And here's what I'm doing in terms of rotation. So just uh, 90 degrees on the X and negative one on the Y. And this is fixing the orientation for my particular model. If you've done any um, or orientation changes during sculpting or something like that, and you haven't corrected them, um, or I think the older versions of the MetaHumans kind of might offset the, the heads or something. I've noticed that with one of my old versions, but that might have just been something I did accidentally in my workflow. So just be wary of that because its import location is important for binding it to the head. So um, we can pretty much just leave everything else as is and we'll just hit import. Okay, so here is our hair after importing and we'll just zero out it. So you can see it in the viewport there, it does align with our model. Um, and as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, just those issues there with the side of the head. Uh, this is okay, but it's not great. It needs some work. Um, and if we just double click into the um, asset, can see it a little bit closer and um, you'll notice that the hair has got nice interpolation um, at the resolution that we exported it. So I've compared this back and forth with a couple of different um, grooms that I did. You can see some more issues there. Um, and this seems to look about the same as what the uh, MetaHuman rigs come with in terms of hair. Obviously the quality of the, the grooms that the, the guys over at MetaHumans and Unreal have done is significantly better than what I've done. Uh, but this, um, for you guys who are actually groomers, uh, will get you on the way. So uh, this isn't fixed yet though, because if we select our mesh and we move them, uh, the hair won't stay bound to the body. So we will select the hair and uh, we need to make sure it's in the viewport and in its position first. So if you haven't already dragged it in, drag it in. I'm going to right click on it and we're going to go to create binding. So we want a groom binding type of skeletal mesh and we need to find our um, actor there. That one is going to be called BP Sculpt Edited 1. Great name, Michael. So we're going to type um, edited sculpt 1, edited 1. And it is your face mesh that you want, not the body, um, because it's attaching it to the head, obviously. And hit create. And then that is fine. And then on our head mesh, we need to go to the face. We just select our blue, our actor again, and we need to go to the hair. And we have the binding asset. I've got an old one there, so I'll just undo that. Um, a groom asset is going to be this. Drop that in there. And our binding asset is this one here. And then that should stay stuck, as you can see. So that's the old one that I imported. That's not part of the um, many human any longer. So there you go. That is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, the physics should be working for it. It's probably hard to see though with this fella because he's got fairly short here. You can double check that by going in to the physics and if you want to adjust bend dampening, things like that, you can make it more floppy, um, enable simulation, that sort of thing. But um, out of the box, I think it generally looks quite good. Just depends on what your use case is specifically. Hopefully that tutorial was useful to you. If you've got any questions on things I haven't covered, just uh, shout out in the comments. And uh, thanks as always to our patrons uh, for supporting the channel and keeping the lights on and bringing you tutorials just like these ones. You'll see their names here on screen. They're legends. Give them a round of applause. And um, for all of you now, we'll uh, see you in the next tutorial. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.